What's up, everybody? My name is Jeremy Siskin. I am the author of Playing Solo Jazz Piano and Jazz Piano Fundamentals. Um, and today, what I want to talk to you about is some of the prettiest sounding um, fills in the upper register that I use and I know a lot of great jazz greats use. Um, and I'm going to tell you how to um, come up with them, how to use them, and then some variations and interesting things to just play around with. Um, so I'm going to be using the tune Chelsea Bridge to demonstrate today. If you're not familiar with this tune, I'm going to play a little bit and I'm going to use some of this device, uh, which I call interlocking fifths and sixths. So listen for what I do in the upper register and then I will explain it to you. Um, so. out as I was playing. I don't know if you can now see it on my face. Um, I guess the playing was just that good, right? I'm modest. It's cool. <laughs> um, okay, so, you know, I overdid it in the in the uh, upper register so that I could show you this device. So I call it interlocking fifths and sixths. Um, and here is how it works. Um, I'm going to show it to you first independent of any chord. Um, and I'm going to do this really not so much using notation here, um, but I'm going to show you. So let's say I'm going to take an F major chord. Um, each time I do this, at least for now, it's going to be with a triad. So I'm going to take an F major triad, and it could be in any inversion. So we're going to do this in root position first. F, A, C, and then F. You know, I'm going to map this out on manuscript paper for you. So F. A, do it in, I'll do it in blue so you can see it. Is that in blue? Yeah, F, A, C, and then F. So you notice that I've done four notes and I've doubled the lowest note as the highest note. That's very essential. Cool. Um, right, so I'm not thinking about chords. Now what I'm gonna do in order to get these interlocking fifths and sixths is that I'm going to take the non-adjacent notes, the notes that are not next to each other. So, uh, for example, the uh, lowest note and then this third note up. So F and C, those are non-adjacent. And then A and F, those are non-adjacent. So I call these interlocking because they each have notes that are kind of in between uh, the notes of the other interval. Whoop, that eraser was too big. So what we end up getting is this beautiful sound, which I really love. It pings much more than other things that I hear people do. Even if I were able to play this F, try it all together, it doesn't have the same ring for whatever, for whatever reason. So as I said, this could be a triad in any inversion and you get pretty similar results. So if, for instance, I want to do this same F triad, but with the A on bottom in first inversion, I can make this work. I'm just, again, going to take the first and third and then the second and fourth notes. And now I actually get two sixths instead of a fifth and a sixth. I get A to F and then C to A. Sounds like a doorbell, but in a nice way, <laughs> not in a bad way. And then similarly, if I had the C on top and bottom, remember, it's always going to be the uh, note doubled on bottom and on top. Again, I'm going to end up with a sixth and a fifth. And oftentimes what I'll do is I go through the different inversions. And 
that would be a great exercise. Let's do it in F. If you're at your piano, do it with me. So I'm gonna essentially be replacing these two notes with different fingers. Right. Okay, so that's the general concept of how this works. Now, where it gets really fun is when we actually get the chords involved. Um, because I chose F major actually for a reason, um, because it's a really lovely chord against this um, E flat 7 sharp 11. Um, it's one of these chords that we call an upper structure. If you're not familiar with the term, upper structure essentially means that we're making a chord out of three or you know sometimes four notes if we're thinking seven chords, but usually three notes, just a triad, out of some of the higher notes, like the ninth, eleventh, and thirteenth, or the seventh, ninth, and eleventh of a chord. So I'll give you a simple example before we look at this more complex E flat seven sharp eleven. So let's say we're in the key of C. We could say that, you know, if we're using a G major seventh, including the ninth, we could say that G, B, D, that's a G major chord. So it's kind of an upper structure of C major. If we have a C minor chord, we could say that B flat major is an upper structure of C minor because that's the seventh, ninth, and eleventh. They make up this B flat major triad. Pretty nifty. Now, in this case, it's a little bit uh, maybe more interesting. So I got this F triad using the ninth, which is F, right? The sharp eleventh, which is A natural. The eleventh, remember, is uh, another way of saying the fourth. For normal fourth in an E flat major scale is A flat, so sharp eleventh is A natural, and then the thirteenth, which is C. So these are going to be very rich notes. So if I use this on E flat seven sharp eleven, very nice. Now that's certainly not the only option. Um, I think in this case it kind of is the, the best one. Um, we could add a flat nine, in which we get, in which case we get an A minor chord. Cool. Good look for my YouTube video. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'll edit that out. Um, so um, I could use that A minor. Or come to think of it, the seventh is D flat, which is the same as C sharp, so I could have A major. All right, and I can use many of these same options as we get to D flat seven, sharp eleven. So the most, you know, kind of intuitive option for me is E flat major, which would be the parallel of the first chord we talked about, F major. But I actually just tried E minor, and I liked it quite a lot. And so E minor, again, I would need to have a flat 9, um, and also a flat 13. That's a really nice, colorful chord. Let me show you for some chords uh, that are a little different. How about E flat minor 7? That's not a dominant chord, so that's maybe a nice one to look at. So. Um, some upper structures you could use. G flat major is kind of a simple one. It's the third, fifth, seventh. Um, D flat major is also a really lovely upper structure. That would be the seventh, ninth, and eleventh. F minor, um, with the melody being D flat, might kind of crunch. Let's see. Oh no, it's nice. The G, the G flat just doesn't add that much to the chord because we already really hear those notes as a central tone. So here I'd probably pick the D flat major or the F minor. And now 
what's cool is that if you think about it, you know, D flat major, you know, it's D flat, F, A flat, F minor. I'm going to write the notes in a different order, F, A flat, and C. There's really only one note difference, which gets me to my next idea, which is that you can actually mix um, upper structures for these kinds of chords. So it could be... Do you catch what I did? It was a little bit slick. I used D flat major here, and then F minor, you could tell because of the C natural. If you wanted to, you could think of that in another way. You could think that it's like a D flat major seven chord. Because that major seventh chord has D flat, F, A flat, and C. It's got those three notes. Um, so it is legitimate, you know, if you want to, to think of uh, major seventh chord upper structures instead of just triads. Kind of nifty. We could do the same thing using all of our dominant alter tones. So let's say we chose two upper structures, D major and E major. So these chords have nothing in common, um, right? In this case, I actually probably wouldn't choose these because of this F, F melody note, which really you know, doesn't go so well. That's the 13th, and both of these, are the E major chord has that flat 13th. But maybe D major and F major. Those share the same octatonic scale, so it actually works nicely. major seventh chord like we get when we go to this D flat six. So because it is a six chord, B flat minor is going to work really nicely. That's the sixth, the root, and the third. It's not the most colorful ever. But it's lovely. Um, F minor, also a nice choice that has the seventh. It certainly isn't a problem to have a seventh um, up top on a sixth chord. Usually the problem with a, having a major seventh in a sixth chord is that you have the root in the melody, and so the seventh is just like that half step away. But that color it still uses the D flat major scale. So that's actually a pretty nice fresh color. You know, it's pretty common to add the sharp 11 into the voicings um, for major chords. So an E flat major or a C minor chord would also be nice. Assuming that you want that really bright sound. And again, this is potentially the time to use a seventh chord. So it could be like C minor seven. So you've got all kinds of options. So just as, as a reminder of what we did today, um, I showed you how to form these triads with the same note on top and on bottom. I showed you kind of a, a little exercise. To practice. And then we talked about how to figure out what triads to use with what chords by talking about this concept of upper structures. And we started first with just one triad per chord. And then we talked about the possibility of mixing two different triads for more color. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you want to support, I got these two amazing books, Jazz Piano Fundamentals, Playing Solo Jazz Piano. Bye, 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 it's Christmas. Um, <laughs> take care, everybody. See you soon.